but we did something really different this week for our customers. And we traveled a long way to do it. We sure did. Let's talk about that. Well, welcome back to the channel. I am Terry with Next Wave Cruising. I'm Rich with Next Wave Cruising. And we have come a long way over the Atlantic Ocean to beautiful Budapest. Budapest in Hungary. Yeah. And as you can see behind us, that is the Pest side of the city. Right. We are right here along the river, the beautiful Danube. Very wide in this spot. And why were we here? We were here for the River Cruise Expo. This is an opportunity for us to interact with all of the significant river cruise lines who travel not only the rivers in Europe, but also many, many rivers around the world. And they were here to bring us up to date on ship designs, what they're doing from an itinerary perspective, new ports, new whole itinerary destinations on new rivers, and many things that are gonna help customers really understand how to optimize cruise vacations on the rivers of the world as we go forward. So I can't wait to get back and, and really help make those good matches for our customers based on what we learned here at uh, the River Cruise Expo. And they really did a great job. They gave us so much information. There were so many of the river ships here uh, for us to get on and, and explore, make some videos for, to, uh, for you guys, and just to see what, it's, what all of them are like and what they're all doing. Right, because it's all about fit. It's all about right. finding the right itineraries, the um, intensity of time in port. Mm -hmm. One of the things we talked a lot about this week is that while other kinds of vacations, including ocean cruise vacations, may take you to a country, right. the river cruises really help you travel through a country. Right. You get a more immersive opportunity, overnight stays, the distances between the ports are manageable, mm -hmm. so they can stay in port a long time even when they're not staying overnight. Right. And we also got to experience a little bit at least of Budapest over the last four to five days mm -hmm. while we've been here. So we want to talk a little bit about our experience even staying on a cruise ship mm -hmm. because we stayed on a river cruise ship as our hotel right. while we were here for the meeting. Mm -hmm. And how did that work out? That was great. Uh, the, the Viking uh, cruise ship was our was our host and it, they did a fantastic job. Didn't you think so? What a beautiful uh, ship design. You're going to see us put some particular episodes out that will show you that ship in great detail. Right. But the light of uh, kind of fit and, and um, textures and colors everywhere throughout that ship, that right. Scandinavian design right. is very, very appealing. Right. And uh, they just have that, that ship in tip top shape and the staff could not have been better or more attentive to us. They really made us feel at home. And I think one of the things that you were talking about is that uh, about the fit for, for each customer may have a different fit. Um, they are different. There's a lot of differences between the two. It's not like one, one river boat is the same as the next. They're, they're different. They have uh, different itineraries. They have uh, different types of uh, ways that they, they handle their excursions. So it's really good to know all of the different uh, lines and, and how they do it. And one of the really nice things too, as you can see from right behind us, when you come into dock, you are right here in the middle of the city. You, you walk on and walk off as you multiple please. Multiple times multiple all day times long. Multiple times if you want to go and, and have lunch on shore and find a nice little restaurant or go, uh, you, you can do that on your own. It's really a, a neat way to get out and explore the city and not always having to be with a group. You can do it on your own. That's right. Now, uh, while we were here in Budapest for the River Cruise Expo, and we'll intersperse some video here, we had a chance to visit a number of places ourselves, and we would highly recommend spending some time in, in Budapest. If you can do that, yeah. uh, we went to the National Train Museum. That was neat. The yep. big roundhouse where yep. they would store the, the train cars and potentially in the days that it was active, move them around so that they could be hooked onto the correct engine and caboose and right. configured in a way that was gonna come and go from that, that roundhouse. Right. There were a lot of train cars on the grounds and we enjoyed a little bit of time on that uh, Orient Express railway car. Yeah, that was really kind of cool. It was the original, one of the original 
Orient Express dining cars and uh, it, it's been restored. It's beautiful. It really is. And it was a great venue too because our hosts from here in Hungary had musicians who came and performed. There was a sand artist, artist. very, very yeah. unique kind of art that he was able to combine sand art and technology. Mm -hmm. And we got to watch all of that while we enjoyed a really fun, authentic dinner. Right. Uh, everything from goulash to uh, yeah. paprika chicken right. and everything that would be representative of this area. And it was really good. But yeah, and typical of of uh, you know European cities, there's just so much history here, and it was so interesting to go on our uh, guided tour and and as we were going from one restaurant to another, <laughs> uh, you know we were we were learning more about the the, the history of of uh, Budapest and and it was really kind of neat. So you get that when you stop in these little European uh, cities and, and towns along the way. And this is certainly significant with the combination now of Buda and Pest forming really two cities in one. There is more to see than we could see in even the few days that we've been here. Right. I would definitely come back. Right. I really have a lot more I want to explore, whether it's the castles or the churches, the huge parliament building, and mm -hmm. very significant, as you said, from a historic point of view, architecture, uh, there's a very uh, large Jewish heritage opportunity for learning here. Uh, there are spas that you can go to visit right. and kind of have go to the baths and, yeah. and relax. But we did a walking tour that was focused around food and wine. Right. And uh, Erica, shout out to Erica, our, our tour guide, as we did that all by foot walking. And as you said, I liked the walking because you felt the neighborhoods. You saw the pedestrian squares and the streets that were basically allocated for everyone walking Just and biking traffic, exactly. rather than heavy traffic coming through. Mm -hmm. And we really got to see and feel the flavor of what was happening. We had an amazing authentic lunch. Yeah. That was very, very yeah. delicious. And yeah. that was a, a chicken again, lots the of paprika. Pa paprika chicken. Yeah. That was that very, very good, really delicious soup. Mm -hmm. And of course there's some strudels for dessert right. and uh, some nice selections of wine as we went through there. We also made a very unique stop. There is a, a company who is world famous, but headquartered here that had a very unique history um, that would take too much time to go into here, but we learned a lot about the company history. And they are a liquor company that has a special recipe that is really based all around 40 herbs and spices, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but it's basically an herbal mixture, and they use that to make their fine liqueurs. Right. And they have innovated that over time, and we ate, were able to see the process go into the original factory, which the family has now purchased back. Right. Um, of course, they lost it for a point in time when different, you know, kind of political right. winds were blowing, but... Um, and the it, communists took over and they, right. they na na nationalized, nationalized it. And then took the, and, the facilities, right. but the, the family persevered and right. got it back and it is functioning today. And it is the, the Unicum brand right. that people may have seen around the world that they're still selling mm -hmm. and it was really fascinating now we tried several mm -hmm. there was an original there was a plum flavored and there was one that gave you that little bit of yeah the coffee coffee I, how did you my, like that was my favorite that was yeah. the third and yeah, final I, one I, I like they that saved one. the best for yeah, last yeah absolutely and you were saying that the, the whole process looked like a pharmacy it did you know? remind me of that right and you do get a little taste that it's, is that cough medicine or is that a, a liqueur because of it is strong and dark and, yes um, but there are just a lot of measuring and mixing it's the kind of combination of that and all the casks and oak that were down in their right. basement subterranean areas mm -hmm. remind you a lot of wine you know storage exactly. and, and wine making so right. that was a fun stop but mm -hmm. we weren't even done there right. uh, we did go for an afternoon stop at a, a place that really emphasizes and and offers strudels along with some lunches and right. main courses but we went basically for a mid-afternoon coffee mm -hmm. tea and strudel we even got to uh, go downstairs into some of their preparation areas and really work with the dough that stretches right. so thin to make this incredible mm. uh, strudel that is you know enjoyed here in Hungary in particular. It's different um, than you may even see in Austria or other parts of Europe. So we got to work with the dough and really participate in what it would be like to prepare it. Watch an expert do it. It, it was like you know made it look so easy. <laughs> very very interesting and how fast they right. can prepare that fill it and have it ready rolled and ready to go. Mm -hmm. We went upstairs and enjoyed some of our own mm -hmm. and uh, the coffees and teas were good as well. Right. And then we went and had a really, really cool wine tasting 
in the cellar areas of one of the downtown local wine shops. And that when you amazing. walk by on the street, you have no idea. You really don't. Of and what's downstairs. You go downstairs and then you go down and then you keep going. <laughs> and, and around, I mean, it was just it must a, have been a, a series of at, cellars. You know, but unbelievable. Just beautiful, yeah. and the, the wine being stored there and displayed there. Yeah. And then, of course, they treat you to beautiful cheeses and fruit and salamis right. as you taste the various wines. And again, to get that sense and enthusiasm from the, our local hosts, mm -hmm. each place people came and hosted and explained the background. And it's really a kind of a visit, a port here that you can immerse yourself in any of these areas right. and really get a sense of what it is like for the Hungarian people, what they're proud of and what they are very, very happy to share with all of us when we come to their beautiful cities. So um, it really made the River Cruise Expo not only about cruise ships, but also about traveling in Europe and appreciating right, the how experience. fortunate the yep. experience is. Right, and if yep. you haven't done it or haven't done it for a long time, being on a small boutique floating hotel, right. a river cruise ship is a great way to do that. Now, if you're finding something helpful so far in this video, something insightful, and maybe piquing your interest in river cruising, then I'd ask you to give this episode a thumbs up. We greatly appreciate that. And if you haven't already, this would be a fantastic time for you to, to subscribe to our channel. We are posting videos from all of our cruising adventures because we want to bring you the best of what's happening with cruise ships, itineraries, ports, ocean and river cruising. And here this deep dive on river cruising is bringing us so much information. If you're a subscriber and you have notifications turned on, you'll be among the first to know every time we post a new episode to the channel and you'll be able to incorporate that information and we can help you incorporate that information in planning your next river cruise adventure. So thank you in advance. And if you have subscribed, thank you. You're helping us grow the channel and we're bringing the information to more and more people all the time. Right. That's right. Now, now before we finish, right. well, we have had a wonderful time at the River Cruise Expo, but we're not done. And so this is a transition day. It is. Which means we're going to have more episodes. And why would that be? Well, we not only did the expo to, to see all the different ships and all the new, the new things that are happening, but now we're going to experience uh, another cruise. Uh, and this is going to actually be a cruise, and we're going to be cruising from Budapest here, and we're going to be going to... Right, we are heading back up the Danube. So we're leaving from Budapest later today on the Avalon Envision. Right. So we have actually transitioned over. You're catching us sitting here up on the top deck of Avalon's beautiful ship, and we're going to bring you six nights and days of adventures as we go from Budapest to Bratislava to Melk, we're going to spend an overnight in Vienna, mm -hmm. and we're going to end up at the end of our six nights in Passau right. in Germany. So we're going to have multiple countries to bring you additional information from. We're going to be doing some active and discovery tours. Mm -hmm. We have a cooking class coming up this week while fun. we're traveling, and we have some other fun adventures just like that. So you're not going to want to miss any episodes. T stay tuned because we are still on the rivers. We're right. still in Europe. We have a lot more information to bring you. So that'll be uh, the, what's coming up what's next. What's coming up in our next series of videos. And one of the reasons why we did that, obviously, is that you've already invested in coming here. With your Europe, airline? With sure. The, and, and, and flying over. And, you know, we know how, how expensive uh, uh, airline travel is nowadays. Can be. So sure. rather than to, you know, rush back, why not? you know, tack on something before or after a cruise. And that's what, what we did here. We, we had the, 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 meeting expo, first. the meeting first, and now we're tacking on the cruise after. But, but there's, a, uh, there's a lot of opportunity to be able to tack on uh, experiences and stays before your river cruise and after your river, or after your river cruise, or both. Or both. So we have a lot of ways that we can help you to craft that perfect vacation. And stay tuned as we show you in depth what we're doing here on the Avalon Envision and where it's going to take us as we head up the Danube this week. Now, when you're ready to book your next river cruise, remember Next Wave Cruising. 
we know these cruise ships, we spend time on them, we spend time with the folks who run the companies that bring you these beautiful vacations, in this case on the rivers in Europe, and we're ready to help you, your friends, your family, and or a group that you love to travel with to come onto the rivers. So reach out to Next Wave Cruising. Our information for contact is down below throughout the video and in the description below. We look forward to hearing from you and helping you craft that perfect next vacation. Before you go, check out the video in the upper right hand side of the screen. We have a lot more cruising information to share with you right now, and we'll see you over there in the next video. Bye now.